that God is wrestling with you for your destiny. God did not allow you to be born because he didn't have anything better to do. God has something that he wants to get out of your life. We have seen the hand of God. I told you before, God is doing something here at Mount Zion. Wherever the Spirit of God is, there is always a move of God with it. Once you see God in action, you will never, ever be the same again. You can hear folks preach until we all turn green. But once you see God move, it will change you. Every Christian must be joined to a church, a fellowship. We must attend Bible class and Sunday school so we can be nourished and grow and become what God wants us to become. That's why God says in his word, take my yoke upon you and learn of me. I don't care what you are sick with, God is able to heal you. We as a church have continually seen the miraculous. The reason why we praise him is because we don't know what God is going to do, but we praise him in expectation of what we need him to do. And we praise him for what we would like to see him do in somebody else's life. We praise him for what he's already done, and we praise him for what we believe he will do. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Praise the Lord. This is First Lady Ann Wilson. It is my pleasure to welcome you to Living Word Ministries, the church of your destiny. God has a word for you on today. Now let us go into the sanctuary and hear the word of God where your soul will be blessed. This is my desire to honor you. Lord, with all my heart, I worship you. All I have within me, I'll give you praise. All that I adore. give you my soul I live for you alone every breath that I take every moment I'm awake Lord have your way in me this is my desire to honor you, Lord, with all my heart, I worship you. I live for you alone Every breath that I take Every moment I'm awake Lord, have your way in me Lord, I give you my heart I give you my soul I live for you that I take every moment I'm awake Lord have your way in me come on and sing along with me hallelujah Lord I give you my heart I give you my soul I live for you alone 
every breath that I take, every moment wait. Lord, have your way in me. Lord, I give you my heart. I give you my soul. I live for you alone. Every breath that I take, every moment I'm away. Lord, have your way in me. Have your way, Lord God. Lord, I give you my heart. I give you my soul. Come on and sing that along with me. Hallelujah. Lord, I give you my heart. I give you my soul. Lord, I give you my heart. I give you my soul. Hallelujah. Lord, I give you my heart. I give you my soul. give you my soul live but today from the book of Genesis chapter 15 and beginning at verse number one if you have it won't you say amen, amen. And the word of the Lord there says after these things the word of the Lord came unto Abram in a vision saying fear not Abram I am thy shield and thy exceeding great reward. And Abram said, Lord God, what wilt thou give me seeing I go childless? And the steward of my house is this Eliezer of Damascus. And Abram said, Behold, to me thou hast given no seed. And lo, one born in my house is mine heir. And behold, the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, This shall not be thine heir, but he that shall come forth out of thine own bowels shall be thine heir. And he brought him forth abroad and sa said, Look now toward heaven and tell the stars if thou be able to number them and he said unto him so shall thy seed be and he believed in the Lord and he accounted it to him for righteousness won't you bow your heads as we go before the Lord in prayer almighty God our father we are so grateful unto you Lord that we're able to come into your very presence we thank you Lord God for this hallowed hall, Lord God, it's been sanctified and set aside for your glory, your praise, and your honor. For this season, we are here, and we worship you from this place. We thank you, Lord God, for your divine presence. We thank you, Lord God, for each soul that has come into this place. We are so grateful unto you, Lord, that you have preserved our life all week long. You have given us inspiration and encouragement, Lord God. You have spoken unto us, Lord, in our own homes and on our jobs, Lord. And you have provided for us, Lord God, when we could not provide for ourselves. And you have brought us here now, Lord, that we could worship you and that we should now hear a word from you. God, we believe in Jesus' name that this word will be life-changing for every soul that hears. Lord, we thank you, Lord God, for the anointing of this clay vessel, Lord, even thy servant, to deliver your word, Lord. We ask now in Jesus' name that you would 
prepare the hearts and the minds of each soul that's here. We ask also, Lord, that you would prepare, Lord God, this thy servant. Lord, prepare my mind to hear from you, Lord, and then to speak those words that I hear from you to your people. Lord, in Jesus' name, have your way, Lord. Let the anointing of thy spirit rule in this place, Lord. We ask, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, that you would allow the angels, Lord God, to encamp about us, Lord, and to, and to sit amongst the saints of God, Lord, to, to, to deter any ungodly spirits, Lord, Lord God, from interfering with what you would want to do here today. God, in the name of Jesus, let the peace of God reign in this place and the worship of God continue and the praise of God, Lord, be continual, Lord, hallelujah, until, Lord, this service is complete. Lord, in Jesus' name, hallelujah, we ask, Lord, that you would now bless, Lord God, from the front to the back, from side to side, each person, in Jesus' name, we thank you. Amen and amen. You may be seated in the house of the Lord. I want you to focus your attention today on Genesis chapter 15 and verse number 6. Verse 6 again says, And he believed in the Lord, and he counted it to him, for righteousness. Hallelujah. I want you to help me today in the delivering of the word of the Lord by affirming the subject for the hour. I would like for you to look at the person that is sitting closest to you and to tell them Come on, look at somebody, get somebody, look, get, get a vision of somebody and tell them, I still, I still believe, believe in my dream. In my dream. I, still I still believe, believe in, my in my dream. Hallelujah. Somebody ought to give the Lord some praise for still having a, a dream and a belief in your dream. <laughs> Hallelujah. It was... Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., who stated on August 28th, 1963, steps of the Lincoln Memorial in Washington, D.C., he said, even though we face the difficulties of today and tomorrow, I still have a dream. Hallelujah. I believe and I want to share this with each and every one of you. I want you to hear clearly today. I believe wholeheartedly that there are some things that God has promised each person who has embraced salvation in Jesus. Some of you that are here today have ministerial dreams. Somebody ought to say amen. Some of you have dreams of being great singers and musicians. Some that are here today have dreams of being able to teach the unadulterated word of God. Some of you have dreams of being used by God in the area of prophetic utterances. Some have dreams of peace and contentment in God. Hallelujah. Some dream of financial stability. Lord have mercy. Some that are here today dream of comfort through business accomplishments, allowing you to be able to sow seeds into the kingdom of God into the work of the ministry, into the people of God. Somebody ought to tell your neighbor, I still have my dreams. And my dream is still yet alive. Lord, have mercy. I believe, I don't know how you feel about it, but I believe that all parents have dreams for their children. I do not believe that a child is born into this world 
and the parent is looking forward to that child being addicted to drugs. No child, or well, I don't believe anyway, that no child is ever born and the parents look forward to the child being a drunk. I share with you that on many occasions my wife and I will ride uh, through the inner city areas and we may see someone that is uh, stumbling drunk, and someone that is homeless, uh, without hope, and, and, and I'll say to my wife, there's somebody's baby, that's somebody's child. Some mother, somewhere, some father, somewhere, when that child was born, somebody had dreams and hopes of greatness for that child. Somebody ought to say amen. amen. I want you to understand that children are not born with parents hoping that the child would become a nothing and a nobody. Hallelujah. When a child is born, the parents usually rejoice. Whether they are in wealth or whether they are in poverty, parents look forward to great accomplishments for their children. I can imagine the spark in the eye of a father as he envisions his child becoming a doctor in the future. Somewhere a mother is dreaming that her newborn son or her newborn daughter will become a governor or perhaps the president of the United States. Uh, there is some father and mother that is dreaming that their child will become the next man or woman of God of faith, power, and deliverance. Somebody has got a dream somewhere. And I, I believe that as the child grows and begins to mature in knowledge and in intellect, the hearts of the parents begin to rejoice even the more because they see promise in that child. Lord have mercy. I want you to understand that everybody in this room was birthed by God into the Christian family with great joy by our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I believe that when we were born into the kingdom of God, that God birthed us into this kingdom with a divine vision and a divine purpose. Hallelujah. No Christian is ever born, hallelujah, without meaning and purpose. Everybody has something that God is expecting you to achieve. I want you to tap your neighbor and tell him somebody's got, God's got something that he wants you to do. Come on, tap, tap somebody, tell him God's got something he wants you to do. You, you were not born with no purpose. Hallelujah. God then speaks to us certain words that should inspire us from the book of Jeremiah as he talks about purpose. First, the Lord says to Jeremiah and even now unto us. In Jeremiah chapter number one, verse number five, God says before I formed you in the belly. I knew you. Lord have mercy. And before you came forth out of the womb, I sanctified you and I ordained you. Lord have mercy. He then goes on to say in chapter 29 and verse number 11, For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, thoughts of peace and not evil, to bring you or to give you an expected end. Hallelujah. God has been thinking about you from before you were born. Lord have mercy. I want you to understand, and I'm not going to preach long, God has an expectation of purpose for your life. You may not feel like he does because you're just a, you're just a, a member in a church. You occupy a seat in the pew. But I want you to understand that no matter who you are, 
And no matter what other folks have said about you, no matter what you might feel about yourself to the contrary, Lord have mercy, God has an expectation of purpose for your life. He is expecting you to arrive at a certain point in time where he can say you have become useful unto me in the kingdom of God. You have developed into the person that I needed you to be so that I could use you in the area of your gifting and your ministry, the area of your call. Lord have mercy. I want you to understand today that the expectation of God is not that you should become nothing. Hallelujah. It is not that you should become nothing, but it is that you should become something. The expectation of God is not that you and I should suffer for our entire lifetime. I want you to know that there will be times of suffering for all of us. There will be times when you will question God and, and where is God? You may say, Hallelujah. Where is the God of Abraham? Where is the God of Isaac? And where is the God of Jacob? I'm struggling. I'm suffering. I'm going through. I don't have enough to make ends meet. I don't have enough to do what I need to do. I don't feel purpose. I don't feel destiny. I don't feel called. But I want you to understand, hallelujah, that even when you don't feel God, God is still with you. Even when you don't feel called, your call is still affirmed. Even when you don't feel like God's hand is upon you, his hand is still yet upon you. And your call and your purpose is still sure in God. Lord have mercy. Thank you, Lord. I believe that the expectation of God is not that you should live your life in spiritual obscurity. Are y'all hearing this? I believe that the expectation of God is not that the problems of your life are to choke to death your destiny and your purpose. Y'all don't hear me. Hallelujah. Everybody goes through things, but I want you to understand, hallelujah, that the problems and the circumstances of every one of our lives are utilized by God to make us what we should be. Your history is for your future. Hallelujah. Your trouble is for your elevation. Hallelujah. Y'all don't hear me. Hallelujah. Your struggle is for your stability. Hallelujah. God has something uh, that he must get out of your life. Uh, and it is going to take every single experience that you go through, the good and the bad, to make you what God wants you to be. Hallelujah. I, I share with you today and I share with folks all the time that we all are like butterflies still in the cocoon looking like caterpillars. And the fact is, is that you cannot be cut out of the cocoon and made a butterfly. You have to go through the process uh, and you have to go through the struggle uh, of travail in order for you to be made a butterfly. Hallelujah. In order for folks to admire the beauty of what God makes you, uh, they must understand, hallelujah, that they have got to see you, hallelujah, in, in, in the cocoon stage where you don't look like anything but a little larva. There is no beauty, hallelujah, in the cocoon. Hallelujah. There is only struggle, and somebody has got to understand uh, that you cannot be cut out of the cocoon, but you've got to wiggle your way out. Uh, you've got to go through the pressure and the problems uh, and the metamorphosis uh, that is required to make you what God wants you to be. But in the fullness of time, hallelujah, you will come out and you will emerge, Lord have mercy as a jewel and you will emerge as beauty and you will emerge as somebody, hallelujah, that can be admired and looked up to in the kingdom of heaven. Lord have mercy. We're in the, we're in the making stage. Hallelujah. We're in the making. I believe that the expectation of God is that somehow, some way, you and I will grab hold of the vision that has been planted within our spirit, hallelujah, and wait for the fullness of God's appointed time in your life. That we will stay 
in God long enough for God to get out of our life the purpose that he has placed on the inside of us. Oh, y'all got to hear this. Hallelujah. I want you to understand here that it is going to require stability as you wait for purpose. Hallelujah. Now, I share with you, not everyone, hallelujah, will be the master of the scene. Not everyone will be the captain. Not everyone will be the general. Not everyone will be the pastor. Not everyone will be the lead singer on the choir. But there is a destiny that is set aside for you. There is a call upon your life. And I encourage you, stay in God and wait for purpose. Stay in God and wait for your time. Stay in God and know that God is not going to leave you without allowing you to fulfill your destiny. Let me tell you something. You can walk out on God, but God will not leave you. Hallelujah. Lord have mercy. Wait for your season and wait for your time. It is Habakkuk, hallelujah, uh, that, 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 that speaks to all of us with words that encourage our faith. Habakkuk says in chapter 2 and verse number 3, for the vision, hallelujah, is yet for an appointed time. Lord have mercy, hallelujah. It's a word of encouragement because it's saying, how long have I been here and yet my vision has not been fulfilled? Habakkuk says the vision is still yet for an appointed time. Lord have mercy. Hallelujah. I told you that God deals in eternity and we deal in time. Hallelujah. In eternity, the vision has already taken, uh, taken place. The manifestation of the vision has already occurred in eternity. But we must wait for it to manifest in our time. Hallelujah. But if you hold on a little while longer, if you stay in God just a little while longer, you will see that your life is with purpose, hallelujah. You will see huh, that God loves you and he cares for you huh, and he will bring you to destiny. Lord have mercy. Hallelujah.